Oh, yes. Tomorrow afternoon in the Bronx, only about 27 hours away from the first pitch of the 2019 season for the Yankees. They get set to host the Baltimore Orioles, Tanaka on the mound for the Yankees. And many sites, including CBS, have the Yankees as the number one team going into the season on their, you know, their, um, their power rankings. They've got the Yankees at number one. We'll see. The book is out, Inside the Empire, the true power behind the New York Yankees. Clappish and his buddy Paul wrote the book. Clappish is one of the best baseball writers ever, quite frankly. I'm not being, uh, I'm not going, cr- exaggerating. You know, he really is. And uh, Bob, first of all, welcome to the Bernie and Sid Show. Good morning. Hello, Bob. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. You're welcome. Congratulations on the book. We've spoken many times before. I, 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 I got to tell you this. You know, a lot of the books promote themselves. We have inside information. Uh, your book really does. I know you've been around a long time, and I know most of us in this city really like you. But why do you think at the end of the day, you got to spend 60 minutes with Aaron Judge. Why, why do you think you are availed to all this information? Well, uh, I mean, it's a great question. Part of the reason is because last year I was not a beat writer. I was not covering the team for, for the New York Post, the Daily News, the Bergen Record, or USA Today, where I'd been throughout my career. Last year I was an author. And I was able to tell the players, Aaron Judge and Stan and Aaron Boone, I was able to say, you see that pack of reporters on the other side of the room? That was me for the last 20 years. It's not me this year. So you don't have to worry about what you say appearing in the back page of the Post tomorrow morning or it's not going to be on Twitter in 15 minutes. And it really allowed them to let their guard down and allowed me to burrow into the deep tissue uh, subjects on this team. So I, I was in a different capacity last year, and it really allowed for different access. Well, very interesting. Uh, Bob Clappish, of course, the book Inside the Empire. It's a great read about the all about the Yankees being uh, described as baseball's versions of H- HBO's NFL Hard Knocks series, the NFL series. Did. Now, I want to ask you this question, Brian. Is uh, Excuse me, Bob. Is Brian Cashman, he's been with the Yankees for 21 years now. What is the difference between the way George Steinbrenner dealt with Brian Cashman and the way Hal Steinbrenner deals with him? Well, you know, there are two. I mean, Hal and, and George are just two completely different. I mean, you wouldn't even know that they're from the same bloodline. They're such different people. I mean, George. I mean, I covered him very early in my career. He was a boisterous guy who loved being on the back page. He loved the headlines. He loved have, creating uh, tension in the workplace. That's how he motivated people by by blasting them on the back page of the Post. Hal prefers the background. He just does not deal with people that way. He's a very shy guy, actually, and would right. prefer not to be on TV. And he lets, he lets Brian Cashman do all the work for him. That, to me, is the difference. It's not really a matter of respect. I guess George respected Brian too, Bob. It's just the way George did his business. He was hands-on, and Hal allows, and Brian has proven, especially over the last five years, he knows what he's doing. Well, the, thing, the reason why Brian has lasted, look, everybody in New York gets fired eventually. Every manager, every GM, every coach. Eventually, the arc of your career comes to a crashing halt. Uh, Brian is around for 21 years. It's, it's unheard of yeah. in this city because he was unafraid. First of all, he was unafraid of George, unafraid to stand up to him. And second of all, Brian does not have an ego. I mean, he saw every other GM come into the job and say, well, I'm going to teach George a lesson. I'm going to do things my way. I'll make George see it my way. And Brian was smart enough to know that's not how you do it. Brian prefers the back of the press box instead of the front of the press box. He does not have an ego. And for that reason, he was able to survive for the longest time. Plus, He's really good at his job. He's a smart guy. Let's get to Derek Jeter. It was all over the place in New York last week. The New York Post ran a big exclusive, Bob, and excerpts from the book. You know, I was, in fact, I was in Boca for uh, all week last week, and boy, they hate Jeter in Miami. They hate him. They blame him for lots of the moves that are not his fault. Sherman really bought the team, and Sherman tells Derek Jeter what to do, but it's just funny being in Miami where they hate him. Here they used to love him, but that may change, too. You talk about in the book about kind of a different 96 Kalamazoo Derek Jeter from the guy who argued vehemently with Cashman over his last deal, never got over it, and the guy that Cashman was really able to fleece in the Giancarlo Stanton deal. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Cashman got the better of that deal, and it, it's Derek's fault. I mean, he he got into a war with Stanton that was unnecessary, and he comes into Miami as a new owner, and Derek just did not realize that this is not 1998 or 1999 anymore, that Stanton was the star in the room. So he made two mistakes. One, he should have called Stanton to congratulate him after he'd won the 2017 MVP in the National League. He just should have done that. And two, he should have said to Stanton, look, We've got to trade you. We've got to break it down here. We've got to reduce payroll. Obviously, we can't afford your salary anymore. But where do you want to go? You've earned that right to go 
to the team or the market that you prefer. Tell me where you want to go, and I'll make a deal to accommodate you. You've certainly earned that, 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 that courtesy. But he didn't do that either. Instead, he told Stan, we're going to trade you to the Cardinals or the Giants, and if you don't say yes, I'm going to keep you here. We're going to trade everybody around you. You're going to be stuck for 10 years. Well, that's just not how you deal with a player like Stan of his stature. Stan says, no, I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. He, for one, he said, I'm going to either to the Dodgers or the Yankees. And Cashman saw this from afar and realized, hey, the Dodgers didn't want to pay that salary. The Yankees were the only destination for Stanton. And because of that, because he had leverage on Jeter, he was able to get Stanton for a couple of prospects who may never play in the big leagues. And plus, he got the Marlins to kick in $30 million. It was a great deal. It was a heist. <laughs> a heist. Of course, Bob Klappish, uh former manager Joe Girardi, was a fan favorite. You had extraordinary access to the Yankees uh, writing this book. What was the real story behind uh, Joe Girardi's firing? Look, the, as we point out, that every manager, their methods, their communication skills, the way of communing with players in the clubhouse eventually comes to an end. I mean, was, Joe Torre in 2007 was not the same manager that he was in 98, 99. He, he had just gotten tired of fighting with George, and there were different players in the room. You know, you had... You had Randy Johnson and you had Kevin Brown and Gary Sheffield instead of the core four. So by 2007, Joe was done. You needed a different type of manager. And Girardi was the perfect guy. He was disciplined. He was organized. He was a drill sergeant. And it worked for a while. But after 10 years, his methods no longer worked either. The players no longer could relate to him. The younger players, especially the Latino guys, they wanted somebody else. And he had to go. I mean, that's why Aaron Boone at the time was the perfect replacement. The, play, the pendulum... Yep. Had to swing the other way again. True. Inside the Empire is the book, Bob Clappish. And I got to know Aaron quite a bit down in Miami when he was a Marlin, believe it or not, years and years ago, and watched him on ESPN. It's kind of funny when you think about it, Bob, that he sat in the booth with Jessica Mendoza. He's now the manager of the Yankees, and she's getting a check from Brody Van Wagner to help run the Mets. <laughs> yeah. And there they were doing right ESPN baseball together. But um, you're right. Aaron Boone, I think, was the right guy. And you know, we won 100 games last year. They won the wild card game. They got beat by a better team in the Red Sox in the playoffs. Yet, yet, Aaron Boone uh, was getting killed here the first couple of weeks when the Yanks weren't winning, and I thought it was silly back then. You know, he look, you spend five minutes with Aaron Boone, you understand why the players respect him, and there is a great deal of goodwill between him and his, and his clubhouse, and that, that matters a lot. For April to September, Boone is the perfect manager for the Yankees. Now, it still remains to be seen whether or not he can get that extra gear out of that right. in October. Last right. year, Alex Cora did, and Boone did not. But I think this is going to be a good year for the Yankees, for everybody. It's the second time around for Boone. It's the second time around for Stan, and I definitely see an improvement. They're going to close that gap, that eight-game gap with the Red Sox. Now, Bob, speaking of fan favorites, uh, Joe Torre, why wasn't he as revered and respected by the front office as he was by the fans? Well, mostly, well, it was two things. One, George Steinbrenner did resent him. He really thought that, that Joe was hogging all the credit for the, for the core four years, for the, the four championships in five seasons. I mean, Joe came to New York as a 500 manager, and it was Steinbrenner that said, look, I got him all the players. I spent all the money. This was my team. He just happened to be You're being him. kind. As a, he was clueless <laughs> Joe was the headline of the New York Post. I, and, I, I, and, and, I, you know, and listen, we had Davey Johnson on this show a couple of months ago, and I said, listen, Davey, there are people that think that your stint with the Mets as a manager was a failure because you only won once. I know that Steinbrenner must have thought he had more than even four World Series teams with those guys. Well, that's true. I mean, there's definitely a sense of disappointment that the Yankees never won another World Series after 2000, you know, after, after 2000, that they should have won more. But George did start putting different players in that room. It was just a different chemistry. And the formula that worked in the late 90s had been abandoned totally. And George wanted to fire Tory so many times. Cashman went to bat for him several times. And what broke his heart and really what caused the, the, the fracture between them is that Tory wrote in his book with Tom Verducci that, that Cashman had, had stabbed him in the back, yep. which was just not true. Not true. Wow. And then he forgot to mention George at his Hall of Fame speech, Tory, which was great. Anyway, he said he forgot. The book is Inside the Empire, the true power behind the New York Yankees. Bob, it's an excellent, excellent book. You've outdone yourself. Congratulations. Enjoy the baseball. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure being on.